Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, it's been an extremely hot day here on Pender Island and we've been waiting for it to cool down this evening to do something that we've been looking forward to for a long time. And we've tried to make it happen, which is going to be to release ladybugs uh, onto our property as a pest control for aphids. And we're also gonna start our own ladybug farm so that hopefully they will survive and continue to produce uh, and we won't have to purchase them every year. So um, we'll leave it outside for the summer. They're gonna go in this bin. And then in the winter time, they will come indoors as they kind of hibernate a bit. We'll put them in the basement and hopefully that will just continue to really breed and we can release them every year. So with some of the weather we've been having down in California, which is more where most ladybugs come from, there's been some issues this year. We tried in the spring, weren't able to order any. Um, and we finally, finally found some at our local feed store here uh, on Vancouver Island. So we've got these two little bags of uh, ladybugs here. Not a huge amount, there's 250 in each bag. So a lot of times people will release 1,500 or huge amounts, but we're just gonna be releasing 250 onto our property as well as putting 250 into our ladybug bin here. So um, we're gonna show you how to build the ladybug farm uh, that we're gonna continue to raise these in and then we will release them once the sun goes down a little bit more and it's a little bit cooler for them. So let's get into it. So we've got our Tupperware bin here that we're gonna be using for our ladybug farm. Um, it's kind of perfect what we're doing. You can use a glass aquarium or something like that if you have one as well. But what you really want is something with a tight fitting lid that they're not gonna be able to crawl out of. They love to climb, so they're gonna be climbing up the walls and looking for every little place that they can escape. Um, but we obviously need to create some airflow and some ventilation for them in here as well. So what we're going to do is do a similar technique to when we created our mealworm farm, which is going really well. We found an excellent way to feed our chickens. So definitely check out that video uh, on our web pages or on our YouTube channel as well. You can hit subscribe uh, and check that out later. But what we're going to do is cut a hole in the top here uh, of this lid. And then we're going to replace that with a screen mesh glue that into place, and then they'll have a nice ventilated roof uh, on their tub here, but it's gonna be nice and secure as well. So we'll get to cutting away. Okay, not the prettiest uh, cutting job there, but it will work. So um, we'll discard that piece of plastic and now we'll get to uh, hot gluing the screen onto the bottom of our lid there. So again, really take your time at this point, make sure you are fully sealing any gaps because like I said, they'll be crawling upside down on the roof, they'll be crawling up the side. So they will definitely be looking for any chance that they can get to get out. So you really wanna make sure that you are sealing that in well. Okay, there you have it. One of the world's ugliest mesh jobs. But it's uh, confident that it's all sealed on the top there, which is great. So we're just going to set that aside for now and start setting up our little uh, habitat for them here. So um, a few little plastic bits in here we're just going to get out. And then for us, we really wanted to make this um, kind of as realistic as possible for them. So you probably don't need to go to this extreme, but um, we're going to put some dirt in the bottom. We're going to plant some wheatgrass in there so we actually have things growing inside. And then add in a bunch of things for them to climb on. As I said, they love to climb. Um, and put in some things for them to hide under. So we're gonna be building their own little habitat in here for them. So we're gonna put in some dirt. And we have some wheat berries from some wheatgrass here. So we're just gonna put those in. We're gonna make one side a lot more dense than the other. And just let a few grow on the other side here. So we'll mix those in. And one thing that's really important with ladybugs is the moisture. Um, so you definitely don't want it too wet. They can drown very, very easily. Um, so you don't want any pooling water in there, even full droplets of water um, they can drown in. So you really just want moisture um, that's in there. So if you have a mister um, in a spray bottle, that's the best thing to use to kind of keep things moist in there. Um, we're just gonna give a quick spray on our mist here to wet those seeds and that dirt a bit. And we'll make sure that all kind of absorbs into that soil before we move them in there, remove any extra if we have to. Next, because the grass obviously hasn't grown yet, we're just gonna be kind of putting in some uh, little habitat for them here and things for them to climb on. So the real grass will start to grow through as this will die off, which is okay. 
And as I said, they really like to climb, so we'll put in some sticks and things in there that we'll lean up that they'll be able to kind of climb up and rest on. Some pine cones and some leaves, things they can crawl into for some shelter when they want. If they need to hide or get out of the sun if it's a little too hot in there. Um, gonna put in some egg carton as well. We're just gonna mist that a little bit too so it's a little bit um, damp for them so they can get some moisture um, off of there without having any pooling water. And again, just another spot for them to kind of hide and, and crawl on as well. So another thing that's really important with ladybugs is to make sure you're releasing them at a time where it's not too hot. Um, the ladybugs that you normally purchase um, are usually in a state of hibernation. Um, we've been keeping them in our refrigerator to kind of simulate the winter so they kind of stop needing as much food as they go into sort of a hibernation state um, where they don't need as much food and water. So we took them out of the fridge about an hour and a half ago and they're warming up a bit, but you definitely don't want to put them out into direct sunlight um, because as soon as they're kind of out of that state, they're gonna want some water, which we've got some moisture in there for them and also going to want to start eating. So one of the other things you can do is put some fruit in there. We've got a, a strawberry that uh, some slugs got too, so we're gonna put that in there. You can put in a slice of apple or a pear, um, anything like that. Also, once our ladybugs are established in the morning, uh, obviously we have an aphid problem, which is why we're doing this. So we're gonna go and pick a couple leaves um, off some of our tomato plants that are heavily infested with aphids and put those right inside as well. Um, so that they start feeding on, on aphids and have some of their normal food source as well. So at this point, we're ready to uh, release our ladybugs in there. They've sort of come um, in one of these bags. Um, they've kind of got some bedding straw stuff in there as well. So we're gonna release them all into there. Uh, put that lid on right away, which is nice and sealed now. And uh, yeah, let them start acclimatizing to their new home. So we'll get releasing here. All right, so we are all set up. I'm sure we'll be back with another video uh, shortly and updates on our Facebook page that you can go and like as well uh, to see photos over the next couple weeks. But um, what's supposed to happen is in the next couple days, we'll start seeing some bright yellow eggs um, and then developing into nymphs and having them start breed um, now that they're into a bit of a, a warmer climate here in the summer. Um, one big PSA that we're gonna put out here is put a picture right here of what their nymphs look like um, as newbies to the gardening and homesteading world, I had no idea uh, what ladybug nymphs look like, which is the stage between their eggs uh, and when they turn into fully developed ladybugs. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I feel horrible now, but I have killed a bunch of these in the past because I did not know what they were and did not know what they looked like. So uh, we'll put that on the screen. If you see these around your garden, um, they are definitely friends. So take care of them. Don't kill them like I did. Um, and we're gonna go release the second package um, that we have down in our lower garden around some tomato plants that we have some aphids on. Um, a big thing with that too, which we'll get into down there, um, again, is that it's cool. It's in the evening now. They're coming out of their fridge or a cold state, so you don't want to put them into extremely hot weather off the bat. So it'll be going into the evening time. Um, and also we're just going to mist our tomato plants as well so that they have um, a source of water on there because they'll probably be thirsty as well. So um, let's head down and release our second package. Okay, so as we mentioned, this is kind of the perfect time of night here to be uh, releasing them just at dusk where there's still a decent amount of light, but it's not gonna be hot, it's cooling down. Um, we watered these plants earlier, so we're not gonna have to fully water them. We're just gonna give these a little bit of a mist and then we're gonna release the ladybugs kind of directly onto the area where we're having an issue with the aphids, um, just so they have that food source right away. So just a quick mist. Generally with tomato plants, you don't wanna get the leaves wet, but We'll make an exception for uh, the sake of our ladybugs. And we're gonna let the majority go here and then we're gonna take some up to our greenhouse, um, which we have opened up this evening to cool down a bit as well, just cause we do have some aphid issues in there as well, but we'll let the majority out here.
feel like I'm in my little elf hut. So we're just gonna put the uh, the rest of the bag in here for tonight. <laughs> Steph just gave me a look. Um, yeah, we're just gonna leave the bag open in here for them all to crawl out for the rest of the night. Um, in the greenhouse, we've kind of got them spread out a bit on either side of the property. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll move the bag in the morning. So we'll let these little guys uh, acclimatize to their new home here. That's it for this week's video on uh, releasing ladybugs onto your property to help with aphids uh, and how to start your own ladybug farm so you don't need to buy them every year. We'll check back in in a couple of weeks with another video update on how our farm is doing and keep you posted. And you can also follow along on Facebook where we post daily pictures as well. Please help us out and hit subscribe below and we'll see you guys next week for another video.